We all have a talent. We all have the ability to be creative, and most of us live without knowing it. Convinced that creative is one who knows how to compose melodies or write a poem. In today's video, we'll talk about the importance of having the environment in our society where everyone can find the inspiration needed to develop their creativity. Many countries are already changing their educational system, taking into account the new information about the brain, its way of learning, its neuronal functioning and the creative capacity. Today's world not only requires to assimilate academic content, but to be creative with all the information we get inside our brain. But what does that mean? Aren't people creative by nature? The challenges that we face in the present as humanity force us to think differently about creativity. There are two major forces, technology and demography. And now, the population no longer only maintains itself, but it grows exponentially. Along the way, we have obviously damaged the environment and destroyed many other species. All this isn't ideological, it's a mere scientific observation. We have created unprecedented problems. It turns out that, ironically, the reason why this has happened is because of the creativity of the human being. There is something in which we are totally different from the rest of life on Earth. We have a very powerful imagination. Thanks to the imagination, we can visit the past and anticipate the future. We can also assume the point of view of another person. I am convinced that the radical distinction feature of human intelligence is creativity. It is a step forward. Creativity means putting the imagination to work. You can also understand creativity as imagination applied. To this is the process of having new ideas that are valuable. We have created our world in a literal sense. And we have also created the problems that have come. However, we can recreate it. The power of creativity is the source of our problems and the possible way to solve them. To understand the secrets of creativity, we must understand the expression when we say that someone is in their element. And what we mean when we say that someone is in their element is that they do something they feel comfortable with, like a fish in the water. Being in your element implies two things. First, being in your element means that you do something that you naturally understand, or what you have skills. But being in your element is more than that, because I know many people who are gifted to do things they don't like to do. The key is the passion to be in your element. You have to love what you do. If you love something, if you're passionate and you're also good at it, as Confucius said, you never work again, because you live the life that corresponds to you. It makes you your most authentic self. This is the crux of the matter. You know that you are in your element when the sense of time is lost. While we breathe and live, energy keeps us alive. However, energy is not something fixed. Energy varies a lot depending on what we do. Some will look at your agenda and think, how does he or she do it? That rhythm will end with me. But you get energy with that. You charge the batteries. Others spend the day meditating, and maybe you watch them and you think how they do it, I will die of boredom, but that's where they get their energy. They enjoy of experimenting the moment, the now, in that way. So, if a parent wants to know how to support the creativity of their child, he or she should first observe the boy or girl, not look at the world around him, but to see first what inspires him, what catches his attention, what are the things that excite him, what are the things for which he is attracted, or the things that provoke rejection? We humans are unique. We are able to compose songs, to write novels, shoot films and create, to invent new lives, designing city buildings. In fact, we live on a planet in which almost everything that surrounds us, including the clothes we wear or what we eat, is nothing more than the final product of an idea that came from someone's mind. And when we understand the ability of our neurons to imagine and put them to work, we are able to create, to move forward, to take new projects to solve a problem, to face new challenges even though sometimes we don't obtain the result we expected, but often a stumble leads us to a good idea. We all have the ability to imagine and create, but we have to develop it and learn to be creative in the same way that we have to learn to read. And for this, there are four basic ingredients to begin with. We must know how to choose what is what motivates us the most. For these surfers, for example, is surfing. They dedicate themselves to it with true passion, which is the second element of creativity, because creativity is passion. 
passion is the motor that moves our lives and the world we live in. They are completely dedicated to this sport. They practice and practice. They discipline to improve and control their technique to tame the waves. And finally, they have to risk a trying, although sometimes it goes wrong, because after falling many times, they know they will get it. And isn't that creativity? Let's take an example, Bart Connor. He is now 60 years old and lives in Oklahoma. When he had 6 years old, he discovered that he could walk on his hands as easily as on his feet. Then, he discovered that he could go downstairs walking on his hands with the same ease. No one else could do it, but he did, and it didn't serve him for much, although he was very popular at parties, he was constantly invited. His mother thought about it, and when Bart was 8 years old, she spoke with the school and asked them if she could take Bart to the city's gymnastics center. They lived in Illinois then, and they said yes, and they took Bart to the gym. And he remembers perfectly the day he first entered the gym. He thought it was like Disneyland. There were trellises, trampolines, trapezoids. He started going every day. Ten years later, he paraded at the opening of the Olympics in Montreal, representing the United States in the men's gymnastics team. He became the most successful male gymnast in American history. Now, he lives in Norman, Oklahoma, and is married to Nadia Comaneci. She was the first female gymnast to get a perfect score of 10. Now, they have a son named Dylan, and runs a fabulous gym. In addition, he and Nadia are two outstanding figures of the Special Olympics movement. Together, they have brought to light the athletic abilities of millions of athletes with special needs. There are two things I want to extract about it. The first is that when Bart was 8 years old, his mother could have said to him, in a Swedish stick of the hands, It is annoying, stop doing it, dedicate to what you have to do, concentrate on your duties and finish them. But she didn't do it, because she realized that there was something important for him in that. It was part of who he was. The children throw these signals all the time. The second thing is that although his mother encouraged him, she could never have anticipated the life he would have. She couldn't know when she took him to that Illinois gym that he would win the Olympic medal, that he would marry Nadia Comaneci and help millions of athletes with disabilities. How could she know? She didn't know because life doesn't work like that. Life is organic and creative. You create your life from your imagination and the opportunities you generate, the ones you take and the ones you let go. Being alive is a creative process. And as in all life forms, if you can create your life, you can recreate it. The first thing is to choose the element and then connect with the passion you feel when you are in this element. The second secret of creativity is the ability to control. Creativity is a very practical process. There are many false notions about creativity. One of them is that everything is based on letting go, that being creative is doing anything that comes to your mind. I prefer the definition of creativity as the process of having original ideas that add value. To be creative, you have to do something, and this means you have to work with something. You can be creative with anything. You can be a very creative mathematician, and you can also be a creative chemist, a creative interviewer, a creative teacher, a creative academic, a musician creative. You can be creative with anything that involves intelligence. But to be creative, you have to be able to control the materials you work with to obtain the results that interest you and achieve the goals you set. The last secret to be creative is to make creativity your center, not only for education, but also for everyday life and our way of doing business. Everyone has creative faculties that can be developed. To say that you're not creative is like when someone says they can't read. When someone says he can write or read, we don't understand that he's incapable of reading and writing, but we think that he's telling us that he hasn't learned to do it yet that he has not yet studied a necessary, that nobody has taught him. The same thing happens with creativity. When someone says that he is not creative, it simply means that he has not studied what is appropriate and that he hasn't practiced it. The scientist, for example, to create or forge an idea from very varied information has the same personal creative process as a writer's. Perhaps the instruments and tools he uses are different from a painter or a musician, but finally equally a creative process. To have a great idea or a new idea you must have first some basic knowledge, because you need to have a series of tools or elements 
that just like in painting, your color palette allows you to see things in a different way. When you are very focused on certain information, you favor the action of one of the neurotransmission systems, the neural energy system, and that system often prevents you from establishing associative processes, because what it does is focus your attention, and the creative process needs is that attention to be a little dispersed, to be able to establish a dialogue between different areas of the brain, different types of information you have received. This is how a discovery is reached to see something that nobody has seen, make an observation that can also have impact and relevance, and help people. Getting to know our feelings, ideas, and abilities is exciting. Science develops around scientific questions and tries to solve them. You need some techniques or others, but what you try is to answer a question, and it requires a creative process to mix ideas and finally find a new and different answer. A scientist was asked once, how many of your experiments have failed? And his answer was, most of them, more than 90%. However, he added, fail is not the word. In science, it isn't considered a failure. You are discovering what doesn't work, and you can discover what does work until you explore many possibilities that doesn't. The scientist is also a professional designer and was asked what were the differences according to his experience between the creative process of science and art, in the laboratory and in the studio, and he said that there is no difference. It is exactly the same process, hypotheses and tests, only the result is different. So there is the second part. Being creative has to do with launching hypotheses, trying things, making sketches, exploring possibilities. But the second part consists of being judgmental about the results and considering if it works and if it is what you were looking for. It is a constant process to shape and mold, and when we understand that being creative is a process for which we must acquire skill and practice, it could be taught meticulously in the way we are taught to read or taught to do math, and not only the artistic disciplines, but in science and humanities. It is not enough to detect with discovering what is what makes us feel calm and at the same time with the brain awakened. It is necessary to put passion, like the one these surfers put in control their element, in control in their environment, and sometimes what we forget is the need for discipline, and therefore to control our element. That, that that you have discovered as what matters to you, what interests you.